So welcome to Algebra 2 Honors, section 5.6, which is the fundamental theorem of algebra. Uh, and I'm sorry that I'm not with you guys for this. Uh, the fundamental theorem of algebra, fundamental means the foundation or the building block of all of algebra. So this is a monumental lesson here for the building blocks of algebra. And if you think about it, it's a little bit interesting that you have already done pre-algebra and all of Algebra 1 and are a solid quarter of the way into Algebra 2 before we actually get to the fundamental or building block theorem of Algebra. Here it is. It says, if P of X is a polynomial of degree 1 or more, then if I set that polynomial equal to 0, then that is going to have exactly N roots, which is the degree of that polynomial, including uh, if multiple roots, as in multiplicity, so, so some of them we may have to count more than once, and then some of those roots might be complex, which means we would not see them as x-intercepts because they might be imaginary. That's why you couldn't look at this in Algebra 1, because you didn't know that imaginary numbers existed, um, and so it took this far into Algebra 2 for you to be able to understand this theorem. Uh, so what this means is that if I have a fourth degree polynomial, there will be four roots. If I have a sixth degree polynomial, there will be six roots. Some of them might be the same root twice, or some of them might be complex, or some of them might be irrational, or whatever. We can have all kinds of roots, but we will have exactly as many roots as the degree of the polynomial. We're going to look at um, two examples, maybe three, and, and we're just going to be continuing what we were doing in section 4.5 here. So here's your first example. x to the fifth minus x to the fourth minus 3x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4x plus 4 equals 0. We want to find all the roots. And maybe graph it and maybe do some other things. But we, right, for right now, we just want to find all of the roots. We know that this is a fifth degree polynomial, so I should have five roots here. Uh, here are my strategies. First, if I can factor this polynomial, that's going to be easiest. If I can't factor it, then I can use the rational root theorem to set up possible rational roots, and then I can synthetically divide. I can continue until I get all linear factors. and then I'm done. <laughs> or I can, uh, if I end up with an irreducible quadratic, then I would have to solve that quadratic. So I notice that there's six terms here, so I'm going to start by factoring this by grouping. And so if I group these terms together, the first group would have x to the fourth in common with x minus 1 left over. The second group would have negative 3x squared in common with x minus 1 left over. And the next group has negative 4 in common with x minus 1 left over. So then if I'm continuing to factor by grouping, I would have x to the fourth minus 3x squared minus 4 is all being multiplied by the x minus 1, and that would equal 0. Uh, this is now factored. It's not fully factored yet, so I need to continue. Uh, the first factor here is in quadratic form, so it's not a quadratic, but it's going to behave like a quadratic trinomial. The x to the fourth is going to split into x squared and x squared, and then the two numbers that would multiply to negative 4, that would add up to negative 3, would be a positive 1 and a negative 4. x squared plus 1 I can't do anything with because there is no sum of squares formula but x squared minus 4 factors into x minus 2 times x plus 2. And so that's as far as I can factor that. Um, but luckily for me, I have all linear factors and an irreducible quadratic factor. So I know how to solve linear factors uh, by setting them equal to 0, and I also know how to solve that quadratic. If I'm looking for x, then I would say x would equal 2, negative 2, 1, and then this factor of x squared plus 1, if I set that equal to 0 by the 0 product property, I'd get x squared equals negative 1, which means x would equal, dun, 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 you guessed it, 
plus or minus i. So I get i and negative i for the fourth and fifth roots. That's how this section is new and different from what you learned in the last section. So by the fundamental theorem of algebra, this is a fifth degree polynomial, and I have, count them, one, two, three, four, five roots. On the graph of this function, we would see the three that are real, but i and negative i we would not see on the graph. So there's example one. Here's example two. Um, it's asking for the roots of this polynomial. It doesn't have everything on the same side yet. Um, so I'm going to want to get everything on the same side so that I can set that equal to zero first. So I'm going to have x to the fourth plus 2x cubed minus 13x squared plus 10x. That's what would equal zero. Can I factor that? That would be the first question to ask yourself. And I can see that in this case, there is a GCF of x. So I can take that out and then I would have x cubed plus 2x squared minus 13x plus 10 that would equal 0. That has four terms, but if I look at the coefficients, I can see that's not going to factor by grouping. So I'm going to have to use the rational root theorem and do some other things with this. By the rational root theorem, the possible rational roots would be x equals plus minus the factors of 10, 1, 2, 5, and 10, over the factors of 1. So that's x equals uh, just plus minus 1, plus minus 2, plus minus 5, and plus or minus 10. I have eight possible rational roots. Um, at this point, I just have to start guessing and checking uh, which one I think may divide out, and I don't know, and I don't have a calculator on me, so we're just going to do guess and check. So 1, 2, negative 13, 10, and I'll just go in order and start seeing if they work. So I'm going to try x equals 1 first. So if I drop the 1 down and then I follow my synthetic division steps by multiplying and adding multiplying and adding, multiplying and adding. I can see that, look at that, I actually found one on my very first guess. That's pretty lucky of me. And so I know that uh, I would now have x equals 1 as a root. In fact, I'm going to go over here and start making my list of roots so that I can collect them all in a place. So the fact that I factored out an x as a GCF, if I set that equal to zero, then I would have x equals zero. So that's got to be one of them. And then I just tried x equals one and that worked. I know that it's a fourth degree equation, so I know I'm looking for two more roots. So you can have that set up so that you can make sure that you have them gathered somewhere and that you're not missing any of them. So I was taking this cubic, and so once I synthetically divided, I know that what I have left is a quadratic. This would be x squared plus 3x minus 10. So I can see if I can factor that at this point. And turns out, yes, I can factor that. That would factor into x plus 5 times x minus 2. So that also gives me roots then of x equals negative 5 and x equals 2. All of these are real roots, and if we graph uh, the, this polynomial, we should see that it's going to um, cross the x-axis at all four of those places. I also could write that original polynomial that I have in the rectangle, uh, mostly in the rectangle, I could write that in factored form. I would have the factor of x plus 5, the factor of x minus 2, the factor of x minus 1 from the one that I synthetically divided out, and then the factor of x that I had factored out with GCF, that this would be the polynomial that I was finding the roots for. It didn't actually ask us to write it in factored form, though, so if you didn't do that or don't want to do that in this case, then that would be fine. Here's our third uh, and final example for the day. We are asked to find the roots of 
x to the fourth plus x cubed minus 7x squared minus 9x minus 18 equals 0. This one is also a fourth degree polynomial. So I know that I should have four roots. But if I count the number of terms here, I have five terms, which is not going to uh, factor by grouping since it's not an even number of terms. Uh, so I'm going to have to go right to the rational root theorem. The rational root theorem says that my possible rational roots here are going to be x equals plus or minus the factors of 18. So 1 and 18, 2 and 9, 3 and 6, over the factors of 1, which are just 1. So I've got x equals plus minus 1, plus minus 2, plus minus 3, plus minus 6, plus minus 9, plus minus 18, for a total of 12 possible choices. Um, I'm just feeling lucky. Like, I'm just feeling like I want to start by trying 3. I want to try x equals 3 and see if that works. So 1x to the fourth, 1x cubed, negative 7x squared, negative 9x, negative 18. I'm just going to try 3. So I'm going to drop down the 1, multiply and add, multiply and add, multiply and add, multiply and add. Look at that. I've got a remainder of 0. Today must be my lucky day. x equals 3 is a win. However, uh, what I have left is a cubic. This would be x cubed plus 4x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals 0, which has four terms but does not factor by grouping. I can tell that because the coefficients are not in the same ratio. So then I would have to continue from here. Now, I don't have to rewrite out my possible rational roots. They're the, um, they're the same as what we would have ended up having for the first choices. 18 is no longer a rational root, and 9 is no longer a rational root, but the others would all be choices. So I'm just going to keep going from my original list, and I'm going to try uh, x equals negative 3 this time. I'm just feeling like I want to try x equals negative 3 here. I'm not going to rewrite anything, and in fact, I'm going to start going from this cubic polynomial, which means that now when I make my L, it's going to be one number shorter because the zero was the remainder from the last problem. So the zero is not actually a term in the remaining polynomial since it was the remainder. I'm going to just take that, uh, 1, 4, 5, 6, and I'm going to take the negative 3 out of that just to see because I, I just feel like negative 3 is going to be a win today. So I'm going to drop down the 1 and then multiply and add and multiply and add and multiply and add. And man, I am just so lucky. Uh, X equals negative 3 turned out to work as well. What I have left now is the quadratic X squared plus X plus 2. This does not factor. But it's a quadratic, and I know how to solve any quadratic uh, and find the roots of any quadratic, and I know that from chapter 3. So I'm going to solve this quadratic using one of those chapter 3 methods. I can't uh, take square roots because there's a b term, and I can't factor it because it doesn't factor. And I don't want to complete the square because b is odd. So I'm going to use the quadratic formula. So x would equal negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. So that means x would equal negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 minus 8, so square root of negative 7, all over 2. And then that's negative 1 plus or minus i root 7 all over 2. Well, then that makes sense that if I happen to graph this um, on the graphing calculator to check, uh, that makes sense that I wouldn't see any other roots in the calculator because these roots are imaginary, so they're definitely not on my list of possible rational roots. Um, so I end up with uh, negative 1 half 
plus uh, root 7, oh, sorry, root 7 over 2 times i. I'm just writing them in standard form, which is a plus bi form. Make sure the i is off to the, the side here um, so it doesn't look like it's on the denominator. It needs to either be off to the side or it needs to be on the numerator. A lot of times we would write that in front. We would write negative 1 plus i root 7 all over 2. That's fine as well um, for this number, but that's not standard form, so I'm breaking it apart to put it in standard form here. And then I would have negative 1 half minus root 7 over 2 times i for my fourth zero. So I had a fourth degree equation, and I used synthetic division twice, and then the quadratic formula to find these four roots. So you can see it's just a continuation of what we've been doing. We're just adding in now that we may have irrational roots, but we also may have imaginary roots. Your homework is from the textbook. Uh, and so you can go ahead and get a start on that. And then tomorrow we'll see how that goes for you. So have a great rest of your day.